Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who were uh, afraid of the mess in my server rack, it's gotten worse. But let's go ahead and look at what's in here now, how my equipment's set up as it is right now, and some of my plans for the future for the server rack and this project in general. First of all, before you comment, I'm not running a 3D printer in here. This is just being stored here for now. Um, it is actually currently completely disassembled and non-functional. So it's just sitting at the top of the rack until I can deal with it. Um, don't worry about it. Anyway, so a lot has changed in the rack. A lot of hardware has been moved around and just adjusted. So let's go through it. First of all, you may notice that that micro server is completely gone. Uh, it has been replaced with this Synology RS 815 plus storage array, storage server, essentially. Now, this server is the new primary host of all of the data in my, in my lab, and also just in general. Um, so this is running disk station, I think it's 7.1.1. Um, and that micro server that I was running was running TrueNAS. I mostly didn't want to talk about it at the time because I felt it was irrelevant and it was being replaced literally as I spoke. Um, I'm pretty sure I had the Synology either on the way or in the cart when I made that video. Moving down, I have this Dell PowerEdge R210 II. Now, this was not here before. This is my new router, which, uh, well, obviously routes all the traffic through here. Um, a couple of things have changed with the networking in general. I've had a couple of incidents and outages. So this is my new router. It's got, I think, 8 gigs of RAM and a quad-core CPU. I'll put the specs on, on screen for you. And this is now running all my PFSense operations. They were previously on uh, this computer the Dell Optiplex 7050. And I will still cover this machine because it actually has a very interesting addition into the back of it. But uh, we'll get to that in another video. So that was the, the router previously. It was having a couple issues. Most of it was configuration fault. And also that I think I had a USB ethernet plugged into it. Yeah, that was awful. So this has dual dedicated gigabit links uh, built into it. I also have an SFP plus 10 gig card in here, but it's currently not in use. My future plan is to have that connected up to these network switches. We'll get to this one in a minute. Um, hooked up to these network switches in such a way that everything will just be SFP from the router throughout these two switches. Again, I'll get to that in a second. Um, and I'll have isolated VLANs and just better management than I have right now because in case you couldn't tell it's uh, not great back there um but yeah one of the things I had happen with this already and this was mostly my fault um I had pfSense on here installed to a flash drive specifically it was one of these SanDisk Cruiser uh 32 gig flash drives which is now on the floor um and that worked fine until it immediately stopped working and literally almost lost me my entire PFSense config. Uh, lesson learned number two, back this stuff up constantly. Whenever you make a change, just back up your config because otherwise you're going to end up having something like what happened to me where literally I booted this server up and it just stopped responding. Uh, FreeBSD wouldn't even load the kernel. It was just completely dead. And that meant that my entire rack was offline, the entirety that this thing was offline. So there's now a Samsung Enterprise SSD in there replacing this flash drive. So we're all good there, lessons learned. Um, so that is my new router. Uh, moving down, I don't remember if this was in here or not. This is a Dell PowerConnect 2848 uh, gigabit network switch. Um, I did have a 100 megabit switch in here. I think last time that thing 
as reliable as it was, was not suitable for the traffic being pushed through it, especially with all the applications I'm running here at the rack. So I replaced it with this gigabit switch again. I was concerned about the fans, but the fan issue became a non-issue when I got this thing all set up and running. Um, we'll get to some of that in a minute. So yeah, this, this network switch was my main and still is my main network switch. I tried briefly to switch to this network switch, which I don't, again, I don't remember if this was in the other video, but this is the Aruba um, S3500-48P PoE network switch, which is great. PoE is amazing for what I have planned for it, but w as soon as I plugged in the power connector for this, for this uh, network switch, the fans just blared. This thing is so loud that it's actually unusable in this environment. It is just so incredibly loud that I can't run it lest I go insane. But in my future rack, because I have some changes planned soon, um, this is going to be my primary user network switch. So everything on one VLAN will go here, Wi-Fi access points, every, pretty much everything that doesn't need to be direct connected to the servers. This will be dedicated to the servers where speed is prioritized over everything else. Also, I think I, I never mentioned this, but this switch was managed at one point. I now have it with management disabled because I'm running everything through the router. And that adds extra complications, but it was necessary because managing VLANs with PFSense with this whole setup and this network switch in particular was a nightmare. Um, the interface on that is quite old, so it's whatever. Um, moving down, once again, we have the patch panel. Uh, I think this was a TrendNet patch panel. Yeah, it is TrendNet. Uh, moving below that, this server right here, uh, I think I did cover this in the last video, has been very much demoted to the point where it doesn't even have a power supply or storage in it anymore. Actually, I think that's not true. I think there's an NVMe in there. But basically, um... I was experimenting with having that as a second uh, ESXi host, but that didn't end up working out because mixing AMD and Intel is extremely hard, if not impossible, with ESXi, at least for doing live migrations. So that, unfortunately, is off the table for this server entirely. I'm still trying to find a better use for it. This might actually become my new Plex and transcoding server depending on how things go. Um, again, power usage on that's going to be an issue, but, I mean, power usage in the rack in general is going to be an issue. Uh, we'll get to that. So, moving down, I have the two bad purchases. They don't, they don't, they don't get code names. These were just an awful decision on my part. So, I got this one first, the Avocent DSR4010, because I wanted an IP KVM in the rack so that if I ever needed to access the interface of this if ILO's down or the interface of this ever, because IPMI on this is horrible, um, the idea was I would remote into this KVM, just connect, log in, manage it, all's good. If I have to wrap some sort of like Java web application, it's whatever, I can do that, it's no big deal. Um, I literally cannot find a single piece of software that works with this, not one. Uh, the software required is DSView 3 or 4. I think 2 will work with it as well, but searching on the internet for those has been really troublesome because it seems like nobody has working downloads for it, much less the license keys required for that software to even function. So that's, you know, that's off the table. I didn't do very much research going in. This was like $30, so I was like, yeah, I'll take the, I'll take the gamble, and I lost. Um, and then I took another gamble on the Dell, uh, 2161DS, which is basically the same exact KVM, even down to the curve, except I thought that Dell would provide support and software for it. As it turns out, this is even less supported than this one. Um, this may not even have IP KVM functionality. This one I know does because I've seen footage of it functioning. This has nothing. This is just, this is a paperweight. Um... So if anybody has DSV3, 4, licenses, trial licenses for it, 
or even just like, I don't know, some kind of way to get video out of this over the IP addresses, please let me know. In the meantime, I have an idea for this. I'm gonna use a PS2 emulator to basically use this with Pi KVM so that I can have all of my 16 computers connected and managed at the same time through a Raspberry Pi. I might do a video on that if I get that working successfully, but we'll see. Moving down, this was my old storage server. I don't even think it's plugged in anymore. Yeah, it is, it is long unplugged. Uh, this is that super micro, oh yeah, you can see if I just pull this, this all comes forward. Um, yeah, this is the super micro X8DT3, um, AKA the power guzzler that just, this thing is so noisy, it consumes so much power for what it does. I switched from that to the micro server, from micro server to this, and I'm pretty much gonna stick with the Synology forever, unless, well, obviously new models. I also want to get the, um, the disk expansion module so I can have eight drives, each of them four terabytes or bigger, that way I can have a lot more storage because previously all my data was still in this server. Um, it's very dusty, I need to take care of that. Um, previously all my data was in that server and I had to transfer it over to here. And in order to do that, I needed to consolidate data across the two, it was a nightmare. Um, I desperately need more storage, but we're working with what we have right now. Um, the bays are completely empty and I don't have a use for it right now. However, if I do end up with a use for it, I have a ton of RAM for it. Literally just a box load of RAM because this server, the DL380P Gen 8, got an upgrade. This server now has 284 gigabytes of RAM in it. That's pretty excessive, but also it's perfect for what I'm doing because I've now started to expand a lot of the operations. This server has been being loaded up way more than it was last time in the last video. Um, it's kind of complicated because I think this now has a fan with a bad bearing. I'm not totally sure on that. We'll figure that out later on. But basically this server does everything now. This is just, it's got virtual machines. It's got websites on it. Uh, thanks to this Dell server now, I've got VPN tunnels to run all my websites out through bypassing NAT and the firewall entirely. It's great. And this all works extremely well. And uh, it even worked well during a power outage a little bit, which uh, brings me really swiftly on to this. Now, this is very, very much just a desktop UPS sitting in the rack. Uh, you can see the... Yeah, so actually, I think I can tell it to. There's there's a way to make it display wattage. That's not it. There we go. So that's the that's the power usage of the server rack, 378 watts, which is not the best. Uh, it could be a lot more efficient. I think maybe switching out this network switch could be better, but I'm ultimately not concerned about that power draw, because. I have this much equipment running. Well, obviously these aren't, but just it's efficient enough to where I'm willing to pay the power cost. It's still cheaper than hosting, for instance, in Hetzner or DigitalOcean or one of those, um, especially for how much power I have here. This server is just insane. And it's going to get even more insane because I do want to upgrade the CPU on this. I think there is a very similarly spec CPU, but instead of having a 1.6 or 1.8 gigahertz base clock, it has like 2.6 gigahertz base clock, which is insane. Um, now that, that, that doesn't directly translate to better performance necessarily. There's a lot of factors in that, but this server is going to get a lot beefier as time moves on. But um, yeah, I had to get this UPS because we had a power outage an extended power outage. It was like for four hours or something. And in the middle of that power outage, the primary UPS failed and my secondary UPS kicked in. That UPS is not pure sine wave. So as soon as it tried to switch over, this server immediately shut off and showed orange, orange uh, power supply lights, which is not good. And it wouldn't even power on. I hit the power button, nothing happened. So that's why I got this. 
it has survived three power outages so far with no issues. Um, I just have a spare power connector coming out. Don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, that is the hardware in the rack so far. And then there's that computer over there just sitting there. Again, ideally, I want to move that into the rack. That would probably go, you know, here or somewhere in here. Um, I've really started to outgrow this rack. There's so much equipment in here. It is straight up and down now. Um, as it turns out, some of the issues I was having was literally because it was pushing up against the back wall of the closet. And uh, it, it was not happy about that. And you're probably wondering, why even do this in a closet? Why, why bother? Well, that's because this house is very small. There's no real room for a proper, you know, dedicated server slash computer room. So putting it in the closet right next to where the computers are just makes the most sense. Unfortunately, that is why I have to use that Wi-Fi router setup because otherwise there's no way to get ethernet into this rack. So this, this whole setup is not ideal and it's not going to be an issue for too much longer because I am officially planning my first move. So basically I'm going to be moving into an apartment where I can plan out the networking and the hardware and where everything's going to go before I even get there. And my goal is to completely replace all of these cables. I want to do everything correctly, just fully run properly. No more of these like these weird keystone jacks that are ethernet on one side and ethernet on the other and you just plug stuff into them. I want to run my own cables uh, back through everything, get everything routed and cable managed. Cable management is the big thing. Um, I did previously have these I had all these numbers uh, corresponding to specific machines that were in the rack and I had it all written down in a VMware book and it was great until I lost the book and I stopped writing down what goes where so unfortunately everything's a complete mystery like I don't know what this cable goes to it's not currently powered on so for all I know it could go to nothing but I'm not about to unplug stuff randomly just in case um, but yeah I want to do this all proper Again, I also want to run everything isolated, so servers, everything go on this router, on, or on this uh, network switch, in a VLAN to here, and then everything, user land, you know, home automation stuff. Basically the setup I had before where everything was isolated on a VLAN, except in that setup it was just the, v, the, the home kit and everything was on its own VLAN. Everything user related, including the VPN tunnels in and everything, are going to go to this network switch, to that VLAN, be isolated entirely that way. Because recently I've had to take up uh, running another internet connection for a family member of mine because I'm the closest to them in the house. So the Wi Fi access point is closer to their entire setup. So now they're running through this as well. And I just wanted to keep everything nice and isolated in case, you know in the unlikely event that some virus or ransomware comes through or just unwanted activity in general, that's all isolated on a user network where it won't impact the storage server, the router, pretty much any of the other hardware. So yeah, that's, that's some of my plans. Again, I want this all fully isolated and done right. I also want to get uh, different pieces of hardware to make these proper. Uh, you'll notice I have the front bezel on this Dell server. I actually bought that brand new. Um, I want to get the front bezel for this as well so that it's all nice and covered because as nice as looking at the drives and their blinky lights is, um, I'd rather it look a little more professional. I'm not going to go and say that this is like the most professional operation. I mean, you can kind of kind of take a gander for yourself, but at the very least, I want it to be presentable without making people upset, if that makes sense. Uh, I know there are still going to be people upset. There are people upset about the temperatures in the rack and just how it's managed in general. Um, to give you some idea, it is currently 23 degrees in this room because the door doesn't stay closed. So there's plenty of room for ventilation. It stays pretty cool. It gets cooled by the entire AC system that I have set up so everything is nice and isolated and cooled um, it's a little loud but it's not too bad 
But again, I want to do this all proper. I want to fix this because I understand that a lot of this is a mess. That is a mess. We're not even going to talk about that over there. Um, but yeah, basically, I want to do it proper. I want to get this all set up because I have a lot of services that I depend on from this rack. First of all, the storage, but also there are various media servers and transcoding projects and stuff like that. Um, I'm virtualizing systems for other people as well in this rack. Uh, that's why I'm very careful not to mess with anything live because there is actual production quality software running in the rack at the moment. So I don't want to touch that. But ideally with the new setup, and everything's gonna be hardwired for the rack, obviously. I hate having Wi-Fi, so we're gonna change that as soon as possible. That will be before the move, even. But, um, yeah. The entire point is to make this as reliable and secure as possible, and just learn a lot along the way. I'm already starting to learn Ansible and just automations in general for systems, mostly because I've now got SSL certs running throughout all the services so that everything on the domain just looks good, functions properly. There's no more of those, you know, this website is not secure. This website is trying to attack you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Cause that, that's, that's not how a professional environment would be. And I'm tired of it being like this. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna get everything set up and nice looking. Um, I still want to get another one of these servers. I don't know when that's going to be. That's probably going to be after the move because I don't want to haul another one of these. It's already bad enough that I'm going to have to haul this entire behemoth of a server to another to another state. Like, this is not a small move, so it's going to be very interesting. But one of the plans I have, because this rack is functioning, it's functional, it works, everything's straight-ish, it's functioning. I want to get a proper full-size rack. Like, ideally all of the space that this is taking up right now, but just complete proper server rack. I want doors on it. I want to have the side panels. Um, ideally have the cooling and heating done correctly as well, because again, this is kind of just venting out the back, drifting to the front. It's not ideal. Um, I want to do all that. I want to get that nice and organized. And then I also want to have a replacement for this monitor and this keyboard where it's literally a KVM module or not a KVM, but just a console. Like you would have in a server rack where you just pull it out, pop it open, do whatever it is you need to do, close it, push it back in. And if I play my cards right, if I can get one of these systems functioning or just in general, I want to have it so that I have both IP KVM and physical KVM, and you can switch between them live. There's no... That is absolutely the HP server making that sound. Okay, that's good to know. I need to take it apart and figure out what fan that is. But um, ideally, it would just be... You can log in as if you're sitting right at the rack and do work, or you can come in and just pop open the physical terminal do whatever you need to do, get it done, leave, and it's all just available all the time. That will probably be on its own network as well. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. I'll probably... It's the left fan. Okay, that's very good to know. Um, it, I just want to do this to where I can work on these servers without having to be physically at the rack because it's also not going to be in my closet. It may still be in a closet, but it might be a dedicated closet where I can run the networking. Ideally, the networking would come out of a panel. One of the apartments I looked at has something like that where there's literally a panel in the wall, you open it up, there's power, there's ethernet, there's pretty much everything you need, which would be super ideal because um, that sure isn't. But we'll see how that goes. Um, I'll probably post a moving video detailing how I'm going to transport these servers, how I'm setting stuff up. I might do vlog style videos showing off how I'm building the rack, how I'm building everything out, how it's coming along in case there is interest in that kind of thing. I would love to 
document the entire process of setting this up, getting it to production quality. Um, ideally, I would like to film the installation of upgrades like this and this and this, I guess. I'll probably do an upgrade video on that anyway. But um, yeah, I just, I want to do more videos like this because I enjoy doing them. I enjoy watching them. I enjoy making videos. And I hope you enjoy watching these videos and can disregard some of the absolute nightmare that is the cable management and the environment in general. I promise everything is functioning. I'm, I'm being safe about it. And things are going to just get better from here. I promise. But anyway, that is it for the overview for April. No, it's May. May of 2023. Um... Sorry, it's been so long since the last update video. I've just been wanting to... I've, I've filmed this video so many times, and then I just get new stuff in. I keep pushing it back, pushing it back. Um, one of my next priorities is going to be upgrading this server with more storage. I could do a video on that if anyone's interested. I also do want to cover the Dell, the Dell Optiplex, because I believe someone requested a video on that. Um showing off the ideal setup for PFSense using this, um, both using the VLAN setup and this weird double NIC thing. Um, it's actually quite clever. I do want to do a video on that. Um, but that's all in due time. Uh, other than that, I don't really have anything else to cover in here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next update video. Take care.